on hypothyroidism and hyperthyroidism and us start off the topic uh, uh first uh, before going into the disorders i just be uh, giving a brief about the functions of the thyroid hormone uh, basically thyroid hormone uh, is uh, mainly acts by increasing the metabolic rate uh, by, thereby increasing the uh, oxygen consumption energy consumption and it also helps in uh, thermogenesis so in the cardiovascular system it acts by increasing the uh, expression of uh, beta receptors thereby in the heart rate uh, stroke volume cardiac output and uh, uh, even the uh, contractility of the heart increases uh, in the respiratory system it is going to stimulate the respiratory center thereby increasing the respiratory rate uh, it increases the oxygenation because of which there is an increase uh, lung perfusion in addition there is uh, uh, surfactant production as well going into the uh, nervous system it helps in brain maturation binding chain formation and abnormal growth musculoskeletal system deals with uh, the development of uh, muscle fibers along with uh, bone growth by the induction of uh, osteoblast and osteoclast and helping in the uh, bone turnover uh, in addition there is the reproductive system uh, wherein uh, the thyroid hormone will aid in uh, fertility ovulation and uh, menstruation and uh, an overall effect on the metabolism includes uh, increasing uh, like glucose reabsorption gluconeogenesis uh, and uh, in glycolysis and lipogenesis depending upon the metabolic status of the uh, person uh, so going I'm into uh, high yes sir i where are you sitting because there is a lot of disturbance your voice is like cutting uh, like uh, there is a breakage in, uh, on and off it's not so continuous is it better now is yeah it, it is better? better now yes yes it is better okay uh what the background sorry. noise also where are you sitting sir it was the fan so i am sitting in my room only sir okay. i think it was because of the fan yes sir uh, now it is clear yeah yes sir uh going ahead with the pathophysiology uh yeah it can be uh, like hypothyroidism can be divided into primary secondary and tertiary hypothyroidism uh, in which primary can mainly uh, pre predominant cause of primary hypothyroidism is because of uh, nutritional insufficiency in addition it can be uh, because of other causes like uh, hashimotos thyroiditis or uh, postpartum uh, inflammatory conditions like hashimotos postpartum or uh, decurrent thyroiditis uh, other than that they, it there can be thyroid dysplasia uh, which uh, occurs during embryological embryologic development which can uh, contribute towards primary hypothyroidism uh, secondary hypothyroidism mainly deals with uh, uh, pituitary disorders like pituitary adenoma which could result in a tsh deficiency and tertiary hypothyroidism is Uh, entails the hypothalamic disorders uh, which are associated with uh, uh, TR, uh, the TRH deficiency. Uh, going with the clinical features of uh, in hypothyroidism, uh, as we saw, uh, like first looking in, as the thyroid hormone is responsible for maintaining the uh, basal metabolic rate. Uh, a decrease in the thyroid uh, in the thyroid hormone t3 t4 levels will result in decrease oxygen and substrate consumption this will result in development of an intolerance uh, cold intolerance cold extremities because of decrease in uh, blood flow and uh, there'll be additional decrease sweating uh, in addition your lip the lipid profile will be altered uh, there'll be an increase in the level of uh, uh, triglycerides and uh, ldl levels uh there can also be a uh, brittle hair and uh, dry uh, alopecia as well uh the cn uh, central nervous system manifestations include excessive fatigue the uh, slowed cognition which is a uh, like uh, the memory and the concentration gets affected and apathy and uh, in uh, senior citizens and an uh, it can even result in depression uh in addition we have uh, myxedema uh, wherein uh there'll be accumulation of glycosaminoglycans and hyaluronic acid 
uh, within the reticular layers this will result in the development of uh, like uh, there'll be uh, micro uh, mucopolysaccharides binding with the water resulting in non pitting edema uh, the additional features which can be seen in mixed edema can include periorbital edema puffy face dawy skin and there can be peritibial edema as well if uh, it progresses it can severely lead into uh, mixed edematous uh, heart disease and mixed edema coma uh, cardiovascular manifestations include decrease in the cardiac output contributing to uh, bradycardia and uh, uh, there is a decrease cardiac output uh, and uh, they, this mainly happens because there is a decrease in the uh, like the transcription factors like calcium atpas uh, Uh, in the sarcolemmal genes is decreased which is resulting in a uh, decrease in transcription uh, other than that uh, uh, the one more manifestation which can happen is increase in the peripheral vascular resistance which will result in the formation the result in increase blood pressure in patients who are already hypertensive uh, gastrointestinal again like uh, as the hypothyroid hormone is acting on the uh, sympathetic uh, activity uh, it will result in decrease gastrointestinal motility causing constipation and uh, yes uh, going ahead to the diagnosis of uh, hypothyroidism no uh, uh, i know yes sir I, I, you didn't talk about the congenital uh, hypothyroidism due to lack of peroxidase and what is that syndrome called and how frequent how common is it uh so there is a like a, it can be thyroid hypoplasia or dysplasia sir and then you have a fetal no sir so this is not is from my that... side sir uh, like, even uh, i can hear the disturbance the same noise Is everybody getting a lot of disturbance, or only me? Sir, it is. Hello. On on and off, the voice is coming low. No, but there is also background constant some humming disturbance. Background noise is not clear, but the voice is not clear. Like the humming noise is there here as well, sir. Like. Uh... Ah, uh, what? Okay, congenital. What is a congenital syndrome called? Where there is hypothyroidism. So there is fetal iodine deficiency syndrome, sir. Ah, uh, which is caused by iodine deficiency in in utero, but that is seen in ah uh, patients who are ah uh, like ah uh, staying in iodine ah uh, areas where there is ah uh, iodine insufficiency, sir, in the diet. Other than that, ah. Uh, so like thyroid aplasia dysplasia or uh, if there is transplacental transmission of uh, uh, your maternal antibody like maternal th anti thyroid antibody sir so. सर वॉइस कल ब्रेकअप फीटल आयोडीन डेफिशियंसी सिंड्रोम सर एंड syndrome is also associated the, and even turn, turner syndrome can what is it what is pendred syndrome what happens to thyroid so i i, I just know that uh, it's associated with deafness and uh, hypothyroidism so i anybody else why there is so much disturbance in the background adhe nanagu gotaktilla Ainas, if you are opened your uh, this one window, no, close it. I don't know whether it is that. No, so so the disturbance is there 
in my on my side as well sir like it's coming and going sir uh okay anyway yes sir uh nikita yes sir uh, what is the uh, primary uh, problem with pendrett syndrome sir it causes goiter sir it generally affects uh, it's because of the absence of pendrin channel so there will be salt imbalances sir uptake and uh, metabolism will be deranged it causes goiter there will be uh, problems in organification of the iodine sir okay. so impairs yeah i think none of you are very clear is anybody else more clear homework so it is for you to understand the mechanism of hypothyroidism i think it pendrett syndrome is a very classical example i think you need to you know put it up in the class see the last class i asked you to put up and only nikita responded all of the others in will not not bothered it is a homework is not only for one person i i always see nikita is the only one who i uh, religiously puts it up others are all just taking it very casually including registrars you need to put it up because when i ask you in the class if it is you know if you have not come prepared and you have not read then it is you know it is a, a indict indictment of all of you not just one person who is uh, presenting so if this is your attitude we'll stop the classes when we ask for homework nobody bothers i think even registrar your your knowledge level is not good enough for you to just take it easy you need to if i ask if you ask for homework you also need to put it up in the class in the in our s1 a whatsapp group if the, if we don't see this regularly i will i will definitely stop the class okay aina's continue no sir going ahead with the diagnosis of uh, hypothyroidism Uh, if you are suspecting hypothyroidism, uh, first we go ahead and measure the TSH levels. Uh, like if they are high, it is indicative of primary hypothyroidism, and if it's low, uh, uh, there are chances that there is a secondary or tertiary hypothyroidism. Uh, furthermore, you go ahead and uh, you evaluate, like uh, you'll measure the uh, free T four. Uh, T four levels. This is one of the confirmatory tests for uh, primary hypothyroidism. Uh, if it's normal, that is when you'll uh, suspect uh, subclinical hypothyroidism. And uh, if it's low, then there's a confirmatory diagnosis for uh, primary hypothyroidism. Uh, how how is it? If, I know. So, explain. Why do you have to measure F T four to confirm subclinical or primary? Uh, so like uh, usually uh, like. Uh, your free t your uh, hypothalamus pituitary axis will will cause an uh, increase in the level of tsh and uh, furthermore it will uh, like if it is primary hypothyroidism then there will be an increase in the uh, decrease in the level of t3 t4 which will uh, show that it's primary hypothyroidism however if it's normal like uh, in subclinical hypothyroidism uh, you have your remaining thyroid tissue which is getting stimulated and it is producing sufficient uh, amount of thyroid hormone for a uh, for a particular duration of time so by it, this is acting like a compensatory mechanism because of which we get a uh, normal t4 level sir okay and that is how you uh, but see that it's subclinical free? why specifically free t4 uh so free free t3 can also be measured but uh, usually uh, in the beginning stages in uh, hypothyroidism your tsh levels are increased so they will cause a conversion peripheral conversion of t4 to t3 so many a times you may get uh, normal t3 values that's why uh, free t4 is preferred sir good good that's uh, that's the answer yes sir uh and then uh, Going ahead, like uh, if... you know, wait, wait. Sir. You know what is the normal ratio between T four and T three in the periphery? Uh, you know, sir, I. Which is the more active moiety? Uh, sir, uh, T uh, T three is the more active moiety, sir. 
Okay, so what is the what is the ratio for of uh, T T four to T four? So T three is more active, but T four is more uh, available, sir. Like T three is more potent, but T four is more available. Is how it is, sir. Not more available, more in quantity. More so in what, quantity, yes, sir. What is the ratio? Anybody else? We have already discussed this in the last class when they spoke Eight. about the four. Huh? Around uh, thousand is to one. If uh, thousand la. That I mean, is to one. Three, 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 three. Huh? Ravi, you are mumbling something. Come on. Sir, uh, th thirteen is to one ratio. Sir, T four is to T three. Are you sure? Thirteen is to one. Yes, sir. Give me the source. Yes, I'll send you. Sir, last time I had discussed in that time I saw it, sir. Anybody else, Sanya? It's supposed to be uh, T three E will be in nanograms, whereas T four will be in micrograms. No, sir. There should be a ratio difference of thousand, like zero point zero one kind of. Another homework, okay? Because every time you know, I think uh, uh, Sri Kant rightly accuses of spoon feeding you people. Giving you all the answers. So, homework and put it up. Okay. Niranjan, sorry, I just... Uh, uh, no, 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 sir. No, 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 no. I was asking her what, what is secondary and uh, or tertiary hypothyroidism you mentioned. No, what do you mean by that? Uh, secondary, sir, is mostly because of any pituitary causes like pituitary adenoma, sir, uh, wherein you have uh, low levels of TSH... Uh, from the beginning, like TSH will be low, and tertiary is when uh, there is hypothalamic disorders where there is low T uh, TRH, a thyrotropin releasing hormone, which will cause low TSH and further low levels of T three or T four. Okay. Yes, sir. Uh, in, in tertiary then... hypothalamic, what will be the TSH level? Higher low. In uh, so in tertiary hypothyroidism. Uh, it will all the levels will be low, sir. Like uh, TRH is low because of which TSH and further T three T four will also be low, sir. Okay. Yes, sir. And uh, furthermore, uh, we go ahead and uh, in the uh, next. Uh, but yes, sir. sorry, we are going ahead all the time. So you need to cut down on going ahead. Okay. So I think, you know, it has become a practice for you. you. know You generally present well. You know, using going ahead once in a while is fine. But every time okay. you are yes, going sir. ahead, you know, cut down on that. Okay? Oh, yes, sir. Uh, the other arm, which, uh, like, if we find low levels of TSH, then we'll go ahead and measure free T4 levels. And if that is low, then uh, it will conclude in the presence of uh, secondary or tertiary hypothyroidism. Uh, the additional investigations that we can uh, add are uh, CBC and uh, metabolic panel, which includes uh, your lipid profile. Uh, this will indicate uh, like there could be presence of uh, uh, like uh, increase in the LDL levels or uh, hypertriglyceridemia. Uh, in addition, uh, patients can present very rarely with uh, hypoglycemia because uh, uh, the thyroid hormone does play an essential role in uh, gluconeogenesis. And uh, uh, the other finding, which could be an elevated level in creatine kinase, because uh, there is uh, uh, there could be myopathy, which is resulting in an elevated levels of creatine kinase. Uh, I think it is not just yeah. gluconeogenesis. I, it will also, you know, the conversion of glycogen to yes, sir, uh, glycogenolysis yes. as well. Sir. So glycogenolysis. So that is the more significant action. Gluconeogenesis comes later. So the, the main thing that counters it is insulin, which which improve, which converts glucose to glycogen, whether it is in the liver or in the muscle. Okay, sir. Uh, okay. Yes. Uh, then uh, the imaging studies uh, where, uh, where you'll be using ultrasound. Uh, as such, uh, uh, if uh, like, uh, the ultrasound modality 
has no role in the primary evaluation of hypothyroidism but if at all we are suspecting any structural abnormalities uh, that is when we we'll go ahead with an uh, uh, imaging ultrasound uh, uh, we go ahead no, with no. an ultrasound no 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 and uh, for hypothyroidism you don't it is for sir, if there you are suspecting any nodule or anything then nodule yes sir like if at all uh, there is uh, goiter or uh, any uh, other suspicious abnormality there will be goiter but, but yes. you know, as niranjan said if it is multinodular see the thing is when here when it is hypothyroidism you are trying to evaluate the hashimotos that is the yes, only sir. thing that, that that concerns us as surgeons so hashimotos okay. if you are going to see if there is multinodular goiter and then you are serially monitor to see if there is any increase in the size of the multinodular goiter so that is the role of imaging as far as hypothyroidism is concerned and in you know first instance if it if you are suspecting the other inflammatory conditions like decuervans thyroiditis and things you know you will see signs of inflammation and uh, a, a enlarged gland which you know which you can document Yeah, okay. otherwise there will be there will be goiter in all hypothyroidism cases there will be an uh, a appreciable enlargement of the thyroid but you are only concerned about the multinodularity okay sir to rule out uh, associated malignancy of the sub yeah yes sir uh so uh, i'll go ahead with what we look in ultrasound even if we yeah, are not yeah, using it hyper uh so in uh you whenever we are doing an ultrasound uh, we usually uh, will look at the uh, composition wherein uh, we'll see if it is uh, like a solid composition or cystic complete composition in addition we'll be looking into the margins uh, we'll also be uh, looking into the uh, shape uh, the echogenicity and uh, if there are uh, the calcification foci so uh, like uh, usually uh, like in this first uh, in this image we can see that uh, there is a lot of irregular margins along with uh, mixed echogenicity uh, uh, going ahead uh, there is uh, the other image which is showing uh, like there's a doppler vascular uh, the second image shows a vascular flow uh, and in addition the uh, first image it is showing uh, micro calcifications uh, here uh, we can see uh, like the there's a nodule or an a uh, nodule which is present which is a uh, wider more than uh, taller so all of these factors contribute uh, and uh, help in the formulation of the tyrad score which will uh, help us in analyzing whether uh, it like whatever we are evaluating in the ultrasound the nodule is whether it's a benign or a highly suspicious and, and how to uh, like the evaluate the need for uh, fna further and uh, uh, on depending on that uh, depending on the point score we can uh, if it is uh, there there is it's zero then there is no it's a benign condition two points is going to be uh, not suspicious three points is mildly suspicious wherein uh, we will measure the size if it is more than 1.5 cm uh, we will consider a follow up and uh, we'll ask the patient for a follow up if it's more than 2.5 that is when we'll consider uh, doing an fna uh, if it is um, Uh, if it comes between it's four to six points, is the size of the nodule? Yes, sir. Are you yeah, okay. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. And uh, if it's more than one centimeter, again we uh, ask them for a follow up. Or more than one point five centimeter, we go ahead with FNA. And uh, uh, like if the score is more than seven points, then that is highly suspicious. More than point five centimeter, we can consider asking them for a follow up. And if it's uh, more than one, then you uh, have to go ahead with an FNA. uh so uh go you confused confused it wholly completely confused it start it start again start again tell slowly and also paste this in the tyroid, whatsapp when you talking about tyroid score suddenly from 2.5 cm you went to 1 cm i i didn't understand what you were saying uh no sir uh, so like we were seeing the uh, evaluating the size sir uh, if it is Like, size of the nodule, ah. Uh, sorry, less than one point five centimeter. I was constantly saying more. 
no, 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 no. See, uh, you think... went to two point five centimeter, then suddenly you came to one centimeter. So and the score was seven, and suddenly the score is one. So it's very confusing. In three point three, point, you... three points, it is more than one point five centimeter. Yes, In four sir. to six points, it is greater than one centimeter. Yes, sir. No, uh, no. As the as the tyrant score as the as the tyrant score yes. increases, Anas. As the tyrant yes, score increases, the size of the nodule where you suspect, if it is a yes, tyrant four lesion, even if it is one centimeter, you advise follow up. In the same setting, if it is tyrant five lesion, if it is more than point five centimeter, you advise oh. follow up. If it is tyrant four, if it is more than one point five centimeter, you do FNAC. Whereas well, tyrant yes, five, if it is more than one centimeter, you do FNAC. So based on the tyrant score, the size of the lesion. uh you take a decision whether to do fnac or not based uh, and it is based on not only the size it based on the tyrant score that is what you are explaining so everyone got yeah. confused because of that size okay. the greater the okay. score the fnac should be more frequent correct correct more not yes. more frequent uh, lesser size nodules lesser size nodules yeah also should be fnac yes sir yeah. yes, I, like, i think i yes sir sorry sir uh should i go ahead sir uh, Yeah, yeah. Or like, nobody uh, can remember that you just uh, what is tyrants one, tyrants two, tyrants three. You put it up on the group so that everybody yes, can uh, see and uh, this thing refer. Paste it. You paste it in your room and uh, weekly go through that. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yeah. The exam. They may ask you. Yes, Where is okay. this thing? Roll up antigen antibodies. Resident thyroid will be there, and you should you are expected to know the the thyroid score and the thyroid score. Yeah, yeah, the examiners they will yes. they will ask you. Yes, sir. Uh, I'll go through it sir, once again, sir. Uh, so going to the treatment of hypothyroidism. Oh, what about uh, this thing? Antibodies, uh, the uh, estimation. Uh, so antibodies, I covered it in uh, like while doing hypothyroidism and uh, uh, like uh, uh, thyroiditis. She'll be talking about next yes, when she talks about thyroiditis. Monday. This was a. If there are anti-thyroid antibodies, is it necessary to do a scan and then FNAC? If the anti-thyroid antibodies are positive. Uh, no, what like if the they are. What are the so, types uh, we... of antibodies, ma? No, like if the have... anti if the antibodies are positive, naturally, is it necessary to do a scan and FNAC? Only if there is a so, nodule. Like, uh, like supposedly, sir, if we get uh, get a. Uh, that means uh, that you can uh, have both uh, Hashimoto's and malignancy together. Like, so from what I had read, like supposedly, if we have a uh, uh, like thyroid peroxidase TPO antibodies which are uh, positive, that is. Uh, seen in uh, Hashimoto's thyroiditis, which causes hypothyroidism. In that case, is and it necessary it... to do a scanning of the thyroid and FNAC? Sir, uh, we should do a scan just to rule out if there is any nodule present, sir. Like what? What? How does it to... change in the management if the nodule is present? Will there be uh, Hashimoto's be associated with malignancy? Is a percentage. So I, so I, I'm not sure, but I don't think so, sir, because uh, like it could no, cause no, no. total no, destruction. No, it, it I'm does, not sure, it sir. Does. It does. But, so let us ask others now. We know you are silent. We know, sir. Uh, uh, yes, sir. There is a high chance of uh, Hashimoto's will uh, more chances for non-Hodgkin's lymphoma and uh, uh, papillary carcinoma. Not papillary, man. Follicular. Yes, sorry, follicular. So you you if you say papillary and somebody says no, then you go for fifty percent of follicular. No, I yeah, think it is more, in, more in, in Hashimoto's. In Hashimoto's, it is papillary thyroid cancer, which is most commonly associated. Lymphoma. So, lymphoma. I I thought it was follicular, but I you know I stand corrected. You, I thought it was lymphoma and follicular, but it may be papillary. We'll check. I think. Yeah. yeah. So there is a so, need for uh, scanning in all. So you need to scan, and if the nodule size and the thyroid score, depending on that, you then do the FNAC and follow up. 
correct niranjan sir yes sir yeah okay if the antibody is positive the nodule present fns negative is it necessary to again follow up yes with repeated yeah, scanning I I I I I repeated scans. When when? When the FNS is negative for malignancy, it shows Hashimoto's. You probably, if it the nodule is growing, uh, growing. or if there are sudden changes, uh, this thing you need to go do frequent scans. Otherwise, I don't think you need quite to do free, uh, frequent scans. Uh. Okay, sir, Ravi Shankar, sir. Uh, correct, correct. Correct, correct. If the nodule is increasing. Uh, continue, ma. Uh, like going ahead with the treatment of uh, hypothyroidism, uh, basically the patient will be on lifelong uh, hormone substitution, sir. Uh, so uh, we have a levothyroxine, which is like the synthetic form of T4. This is the uh, first line choice uh, of medication. And uh, uh, this is responsible for peripherally converting uh, uh, T3, uh, uh, peripherally uh, converting, getting converted to T3. Uh, the other hormone which is available is uh, liothyronine, which is the synthetic form of uh, uh, T3. Uh, this is not usually recommended as a monotherapy uh, because it has a short half life span uh, of uh, and it will require administrating uh, three to four daily doses. And uh, that's why it can be used uh, in, uh, like sometimes it could be used uh, along with levothyroxine uh, for long-term treatment of hypothyroidism. And- uh, It's not long-term, it's short-acting. No? Short-term, yes, sir. Like, severe hypothyroidism not, not, to tie down the crisis. Sir. Uh, it will more likely be used in mixedema coma rather than uh, yeah, I mean. it will be used in mixedema coma uh, rather than using it for a uh, uh, it, it shouldn't be used in long term yeah, uh, that's what. Uh, treatment of hyperthyroidism yeah. yes sir. uh and uh, so uh, indications of treatment uh, will be based on uh, whether the patient has overt hypothyroidism or subclinical hypothyroidism. If it the patient is having overt hypothyroidism, you'll go ahead and initiate the treatment. But if at all the patient has uh, subclinical uh, hypothyroidism, that is when you repeat the TSH levels and uh, within one to three months to confirm the diagnosis. In addition, uh, if the uh, TSH level is less than 10, or uh, if we get uh, if the patient has uh, cardiac risk factors or uh, a, like there are other uh, factors like uh, in a pregnant female uh, that is when uh, we will consider uh, starting uh, levothyroxine even if it is a, a case of subclinical hypothyroidism. What is and, the benefit uh, of what is the benefit of waiting for you to develop over hypothyroidism? If it is subclinical, why don't you start a so, Low dose hyper S one thyroxine, and then monitor. So you could you could land up the patient in uh, like the patient could land up in iatrogenic uh, thyrotoxic or like uh, no, no, because why? of the drug. He is telling low dose, no. No, if a patient is already you know uh, subclinical hypothyroidism, you start low dose and monitor T three T four T S H or just T S H, and then you know you for example you now get. 12.5 micrograms of uh, you know you know tablets so 12.5 yes, 25 50 and 100 so you start with 12.5 because this is from the don't... journal huh? uh, yes no sir point... like uh, it what does the standard textbook says that's what the what examiners what expect you from you subclinical hypothyroidism why should you sir, wait so oh, no, once the, uh, once the tsh is high you should start low dose Generally, they tend to wait. Whatever I, I also don't know the exact reason, but they say they say they tend to wait for maybe it might be transient in few cases, so they won't immediately start if it is subclinical hypothyroidism. They check that free T three, free T four, and if it is subclinical, they tend to wait and see repeat the TSH after a few uh, weeks, and uh, probably after that they start immediately. No, Three months is too much to wait. I think if at all you wait for a month, maybe okay, but six weeks, maybe six weeks. Yeah. Four what to does six the weeks. Textbook say? 
what what does Bailey say? What what they? That's what they expect from you in the exam. Most of the textbooks, I don't think they describe much about subclinical hypothyroidism. Sir, even Harrison mentioned there are recommendations are accepted. Harrison, yeah, the surgeon saw the lama exam or something. Okay, what does Harrison say? There are uh, no accepted recommendations, but right now what they do is the three months period of uh, re-evaluation, sir. Uh, hmm. They uh, to avoid excessive treatment. But they also mention that if if the physician is interested, they can start on a low dose. Not sir. excessive treatment, <laughs> unnecessary treatment. Yes, it's no, a choice. I can't understand. You know, twelve point five micrograms. How can it be excessive? Allah, it will not be excessive. I don't think it is of the question of excessive. It is just to see if it is only transient or permanent. And That's they, the uh, bar what? sir, if it is less than ten, ten, we can wait and watch for three months. If it is yes. greater than ten, we have to go ahead with the trial of the treatment. Ah, only, correct. It also depends yes. on the levels of TSH. No, yes, but uh, Nikita, what are the transient hypothyroidisms that you know of? In which condition TSH is raised transiently? Sir, in postpartum thyroiditis and subacute thyroiditis, sir, infectious stage, and uh, postoperatively uh, the correction, sir, uh, if withdrawal of the treatment, and uh, uh, and also pregnancy. Yes, sir. So subacute thyroiditis, they will be when it results, it will come become urothyroid, is it? No, most of the cases you do, but in in Hashimoto's it will not. It will lead on to permanent. Permanent. So there you get transient or uh, fallen TSH. Rise transient TSH. you will get. Uh, you will not get in uh, Hashimoto's. Transient it most of the time no, no, it no. will be permanent. Subacute. Subacute and uh, silent thyroiditis. Yeah, you will get transient thyroid uh, hypothyroidism. Okay. So once the viral infection settles, thyroid function recovers. Yes. Okay. Carry on. Uh, like uh, in terms of uh, dosage, sir, what I had come across was uh, uh, basically we are titrating the dosage. Uh, if you are uh, like, do, uh, if we can consider overt hypothyroidism, uh, that is when uh, you'll start the patient on one point six uh, microgram per kg body weight per orally. And uh, uh, like this is what I'd come across in the journal where uh, subclinical hypothyroidism uh, in patients more than uh, fifty to sixty years of age, uh, we start them on twenty five to fifty micrograms. And uh, if the patient has a pre existing uh, coronary artery disease, that is when we start them on twelve point five to uh, uh, twenty five micrograms. The other scenario is a uh, pregnancy, uh, wherein if we are suspecting uh, uh, like uh, a suspected pregnancy or confirmed pregnancy, then uh, the dose should be increased in such a way that it is two extra doses per week. And uh, you are supposed to monitor TSH and uh, uh, free T4 levels uh, uh, in the first half of the pregnancy and then once around uh, 30 weeks. Uh, then uh, long-term therapy, we need to consider the fact uh, the side effects that uh, over treatment uh, can lead to uh, uh, thyrotoxicosis wherein we can have excessive sweating heat intolerance uh, tachycardia palpitations and uh, arrhythmias the manifestations of thyrotoxicosis in addition uh, drug interactions uh, like uh, like proton pump inhibitors uh, ferrous sulfates and bile acid sequestrants all of these can cause a decrease in the absorption of levothyroxine if you are, uh, if there is an ongoing treatment with estrogen, that is when you increase the dose of levothyroxine. And if there is an ongoing treatment with androgens, uh, you decrease the dose of uh, uh, levothyroxine because of the uh, drug interactions. Uh, glucocorticoids. Uh, when you are administrating glucocorticoids, usually uh, there is a mixed uh, response which is uh, seen uh, because uh, on one hand it can uh, increase it decreases the binding of the uh, hormone to the in the serum because of which free thyroid increases and on the other hand uh, they can also cause a decrease in tsh secretion which impacts t4 to t3 con uh, conversion so accordingly we need to modulate the uh, levothyroxine levels 
the glucocorticoid oh. prevent peripheral conversion of T4 to T3. I think T3. that is very yes, important. Sir. Yes, sir. Uh, then uh, the comp going to the complications, myxedema coma is a ex it's an extremely rare and it's a life threatening uh, uh, decompensation of a pre existing thyroid hormone disease. Uh, etiology wise, uh, it could be triggered because of infections, uh, severe illness, trauma, and uh, it can also be triggered by drugs as well. Uh, yeah, then. Uh, we can uh, like prior discontinuation of uh, thyroid supplements can also uh, be a contributing factor uh, in patients uh, who have a known case of uh, hypothyroidism. Uh, when you're talking about uh, drugs, it can include uh, sedatives uh, and lithium. Uh, clinical presentation wise, uh, the cardinal symptoms of uh, myxedema, uh, impaired mental status, uh, and hypothermia, all of these will be present. Along with that, the patient will present with hypoventilation, uh, with hypercapnia and hypoxemia, and hypotension. Uh, like the, there'll be features of shock and bradycardia. Uh, for uh, diagnosis, we'll do the thyroid function test, which will show an elevated level of TSH and decreased level of T3, T4. In addition, uh, we can have a hypoglycemia, hyponatremia, and uh, other possibilities of increased levels of LDH, abnormal clotting, and increased levels of uh, creatine kinase. ECG can also show uh, the uh, low voltage QRS complexes, and uh, there can be non specific T wave changes. Uh, we, uh, CSF analysis can have an elevated level of uh, CSF protein. In uh, treatment, uh, you'll look into the immediate measures of. Uh, uh, a, like uh, airway breathing circulation, flu uh, adequate fluid resuscitation. In addition, we will uh, start the patient on uh, intravenous hormone substitution, which is uh, levothyroxine, which can be given 200 to 400 uh, micrograms IV once. And you give it once, and then you shift again to the old regimen of 1.6 micrograms per kg orally once a day. Uh, plus, uh, like uh, you, in addition, we'll add a uh, uh, hydrocortisone support of uh, 100 milligrams IV uh, once, and then you shift it to 25 to 75 micrograms uh, IV. And uh, we have a supportive treatment wherein we have passive deworming, ventilatory support if indicated and treatment treating hypoglycemia. Uh, so, uh, hyp okay, wait, wait. Uh, yes, sir. Uh, any questions, anyone? Sir? No, no, I think she's covered most of it. Srikant, sir? No, nothing. In uh, PGs, anyone? Sanya, Sanket? No, sir. No, sir. No, sir. Okay. So, uh, one thing just I looked it up and I wanted to clarify regarding subclinical hypothyroidism. Indications for treating in subclinical thyroid hypothyroidism are when TSH levels are more than 10, which uh, like uh, Nikita said, and then when there is elevated thyroid peroxidase antibody, that means that will be uh, the, the inevitable. Issue. Inevitable. You have to start. And then one more condition is treatment resistant depression. When there is depression and you diagnose subclinical hypothyroidism and the depression is not resi like uh, is resistant to the whatever the treatment they are giving, you should start treatment for hypothyroidism. These are the three indications. And my question to uh, anybody, anybody can guess. Vinod, what are the iatrogenic causes of hypothyroidism? Um, iatrogenic. Total thyroid. Anti thyroid. Ah, somebody, somebody, oh, said, somebody said. Somebody said. Total thyroid, thyroid. activation. San, no, Sanya, well, I wanted the PGs to answer. It may be total or it may be hemithyroidectomy as well. Thyroid surgery. One. Second? Anti-thyroid drugs. Radioiodine therapy. Can yeah, radioiodine or anti-thyroid medications. Third? Irradiation of NIC, sir. Yeah, when? To uh, treat? Lymphoma or any other neck. Uh, to treat lymph. head and neck cancers. Yes, usually. Head and neck cancers. Yeah, so okay. Thyroid yes, shield is there less land with the modern treatment, it may not happen, but it used to happen with the, the old-style radiotherapy. Nowadays, the 
with IMRT, IGRT, and thyroid one shield. Of my friend got it. And another of my friend. Yeah, okay. continue. Uh, going to hypothyroidism. Uh, it uh, hypothyroidism can occur because of uh, two reasons. It could be because of uh, increased hormone synthesis, which is seen in conditions uh, like uh, Graves disease or toxic multinodular goiter. Toxic adenoma, it can be drug induced as well. And uh, it's also seen in conditions like uh, thyroid cancer or uh, hydrated form uh, molds or TSH secreting pituitary adenoma. And uh, the other form is where in inflammatory conditions where uh, because of inflammation, there is release of preformed hormones, which includes uh, Hashimoto's thyroiditis, uh, subacute thyroiditis. It could be itrogenic thyroiditis as well. Uh, so toxic multinodular goiter and toxic adenoma are going to be discussed in a separate class. So like I'll be covering Graves' disease, sir. Yeah, I think uh, all of you, a note of caution, Rarely does cancer cause hyperthyroidism. So don't mention it as one of the premier causes for hyperthyroidism. So if the examiner mm -hmm. asks you, then you can say, rarely does it cause. Okay, so it's most of the time on the say, thyroid CT scan, the malignancies are seen in the cold nodules, rarely in warm nodules, very, very rarely in hot nodules. So... Hyperthyroidism is very uncommon with tumors. Okay. Carry on. Uh, so, uh, Graves disease. So, uh, it, it is usually associated, it can have a genetic predisposition. Uh, many of these patients uh, with grave disease, they will have a family history of autoimmune disorders, which could be uh, type 1 DM, pernicious anemia, or conditions like uh, Hashimoto's disease or myasthenia gravis and uh, like uh, B and T, it is, it is a B and T lymphocyte mediated disorder and there can be various triggers like infectious agents like Yersinia or uh, Borrelia which can also result in it. Uh, stress which includes uh, some form of physical stress like surgery, trauma, psychological stress and pregnancy. Uh, in addition, environmental factors like uh, smoke and irradiation, which could also result in development of Graves' disease. Uh, in the pathophysiology behind it is, uh, uh, it's uh, B and T cell mediated autoimmunity because of which there is a, a IgG produced against the TSH receptors. And this will increase the uh, thyroid function and growth resulting in hypothyroidism and diffuse goiter. And uh, Graves' disease is associated with a Triad, is which is, TSH, TSH receptor, TSH receptor inhibitory. Uh, so it's uh, type 2 reaction, sir. Uh, it, what is TSII? It's called oh. antibodies against thyroid receptor inhibitory factor. No, no. Thyroid, 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 so TSH receptor inhibitory immunoglobulin, TSII. So that what happens is there is unchecked because of the uh, inhibitory uh, this one. What happens is the TSH will keep on getting secreted and then that causes high levels of T3 and T4. Normally that uh, the feedback mechanism, the negative feedback mechanism should work. But because there is this production of the TSII, that is the TSH receptor inhibitory immunoglobulin, the receptor doesn't respond to the negative feedback mechanism. So it continues to secrete the TSH and then in the hormones in keep on increasing. Okay, carry on, Ma. Uh, yeah, the uh, other thing, so uh, Graves' disease is associated with a triad of uh, diffuse goiter, uh, ophthalmo, Graves' ophthalmopathy and uh, derma, uh, dermopathy, which is peritibial myxedema. Uh, not the, uh, it is not peritibial, pre-tibial. Pre-tibial, pre -tibial myxedema. Uh, so uh, there'll be diffuse goiter, which is like uniformly enlarged goiter and uh, ophthalmopathy, which can be associated with uh, uh, ocular motor disturbances, exophthalmos. Uh, in addition, there can be lid retraction as well. Uh, and uh, pretibial uh, uh, myxedema, which is 
basically non pitting edema with firm plaques which are present both on the anterior and lateral aspect uh, when uh, when we talk about ophthalmopathy uh, it is the b and t cells which are activated they infiltrate into your uh, retroorbital space and they target the uh, fibroblasts there and there's a local inflammatory response uh, because of which there is a proliferation and diff uh, and uh, excessive production of uh, hyaluronic acids and uh, glycosaminoglycans and uh, increase amount of adipocytes this will result in uh, increase in the volume of the intraorbital fat and this will also further contribute to exophthalmos lid distraction uh, lid retraction and uh, ocular motility disturbances like there could be diplopia and when we talk about pretibial myxedema it is uh, the there is a dermal fibroblast Uh, stimulation which happens and because of which gl your glycosaminoglycans will get deposited in the uh, connective tissue uh, so uh, graves of thalmopathy is associated with a lot of signs which includes a uh, lit uh, lit signs uh, facial signs and uh, your extraocular muscle signs and so uh, can you enumerate yes. them i think we'll ask vinod vinod tell us all the ophthalmologic signs of uh, graves disease Before that, to uh, disease to diagnose, you should have all these three features: thyroid, eye, eye signs, and pretibial myxedema. Uh, Hello, sir. No, sir. Not. Okay, I think it's not necessary. That is the answer. Okay. Ah, uh, we know. Yes, sir. Ah, uh, one giraffe sign, sir, which is. Um... One graph sign, one yes, graph. graph sign. Yes, not giraffe. One graph. One graph is okay. sign. There is a lid lag when the patient is moving from up, uh, when neck from upper end to lower uh, movement of head. There will be delay in the um, eyebrow movement. And there is okay. another sign. Not eyebrow. One graph sign is about the upper eyelid, not eyebrow. <laughs> eyelid. Yes, I need the level. Yeah, lag. so you said I bro. Yes, sorry. Hmm. Uh, lid lag. Okay, lid lag is one graph sign, right? What else? And one more lid retraction sign, sir. In this, uh, generally upper sclera won't be visible. Uh, in these people, there will be upper sclera will be visible in a normal person with uh, hyperthyroid. Okay. And, and there is uh, dal rimpin sign. dal rimple sign okay next yes. what else and uh, still walk sign sir in which uh, the look will be very starey staring look still walk sign okay yes. and uh, jaffray sign sir in which uh, patient when sees the uh, um, top uh, he won't have the forehead folds wrinkling of the loss of wrinkling of the forehead forehead yes sir okay. right and um, then What is Mabuyes sign? Yes, sir. Mabuyes sign. He can he cannot uh, converge both the east towards medial. Loss of convergence. Mabuyes sign. Yes, sir. See the thing is, some old-fashioned examiner may want to know these things. So, when if you get a hyperthyroidism, and if there are you are expo you are expected to, at least if you don't know the the. eponyms that's fine but you should know what are the signs that you should look for that is loss of wrinkling lid lag and you know staring look and uh, you know exposure of the sclera and uh, what else and loss of accommodation so you should know all the signs if you know the names that is good if you don't know the name at least you can tell them what these are the signs yes sir so label they what whatever she is put up label all the signs in that one um anyway it's okay don't worry we have already discussed it okay, okay. i think more uh for uh, diagnosis we'll be con considering the thyroid uh, the routine lab investigation 
ECG findings, TSH receptor antibodies, thyroid uh, peroxidase antibodies, and uh, your uh, thyroglobulin levels and radioactive iodine uptake. Uh, first, uh, discussing uh, the radioactive iodine uptake, uh, uh, here you will quantify the percentage of uh, amount of radioactive iodine that is being taken up by the thyroid gland. Uh, it is uh, the first line investigation for most patients uh, with where we don't know the etiology for uh, hypothyroidism or thyrotoxicosis after initial evaluation. And uh, we can also use it. It is also used for the assessment of the uh, status of a thyroid nodule. In addition, uh, you can also assess the uh, thyroid malignancy status uh, to identify if there is in presence of any ectopic thyroid tissue or to evaluate uh, uh, the presence of retrosternal goiters as well. And uh, so your uh, normal... We have a How do you diagnose thyroid, thyroid cancer? With thyroid iodine active iodine uptake? Nick, uh, so we want to be able to diagnose it, but then if there is a focal point with, where there is excessive uptake, it could be suspicious of malignancy like a... Excess nodule. Now, uh, excessive no, uptake, you are no, telling no, the opposite. No. I just now told you. Excessive oh, uptake, no, rules no, of malignancy. Oh, yes, oh, yes, sir. Cold not. You, you cannot diagnose malignancy, but most of the uh, cancers are co have, will have a cold nodule. You cannot diagnose that it is a malignant nodule, but most of the malignant nodules will be cold nodules. Cold nodules. Yes, sir. Uh, so, you can have the findings yeah. of... Uh, the effect, the, this one, the usefulness is in diagnosing grapes, of course, solitary nodule, and in case there are multinodular goiters, if there are, you know, active nodules among them, then as you said, if there is retrosternal goiter, and also sometimes if the thyroid is not there in the right place, you may have a lingual thyroid or something like that. So, all for all of these things, it will be useful to do a radio radioactive, you know, this 90, technetium 99M. Um, you know, scan. It, it may scan. not be always radio iodine. It, it, it uh, most of the times it is system maybe technetium ninety nine. Ninety nine. Technetium ninety nine scan. Is the route routinely do now scans? Only for only, when only, only for uh, suspecting. Yes, sir. Sir, it, it is only for hot nodules, or when uh, like not hot nodules when you are suspecting uh, graves, or like you want to differentiate the with the patient has got thyrotoxicosis. You routinely do radio type study. Need, need not be radio iodine uptake study. Uh, uh, if you are giving why? treatment, I don't do that's why. No, no, if you are planning you? treatment, then only you do radio iodine uptake study when you are uh, planning like radio iodine treatment. Allah, that, that is when, not when you are diagnosing the this one, hyperthyroidism. Hmm. You can get away with a technetium 99 also. That is to differentiate whether the entire gland is hyperfunctioning or the nodule is hyperfunctioning. If there are multinodular goiter, if it is a solitary there nodule. Are, there are nodules, it will rule out Graves' disease. Correct. 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 If you if you if the TSH is very low, and then on ultrasound scan, there are either a single nodule or multiple nodules then you are more likely to do a thyroid CT scan. But if the ultrasound shows diffuse enlargement of thyroid, clinically there is diffuse enlargement of thyroid, yeah. the ultrasound shows diffuse, you don't have to do it. You, as the Niranjan said, only if you are considering doing a radio nuclei, you know, uh, the radio ID oh, radio treatment. Mm. treatment, then you do it. That's all. Then Follow. Continue, ma. Uh, yes. Uh, so, uh, we the findings can include a hot nodule, which is like the hyperfunctioning tissue, which is taking up excessive amount of the radioactive element. A uh, cold nodule, which is non-functioning nodule, and uh, it does not take up any radioactive iodine. And uh, in this case, the surrounding tissues will uh, appear uh, normal. Uh, like, surrounding normal thyroid tissue will take take up the radioactive iodine and that is when the condition is called as a warm nodule. Uh, we can, all, so that is uh, the difference. In Graves' disease, uh, there's increased activity, so the uh, uptake will be increased. Uh, 
similarly in uh, like uh, toxic multi in uh, in toxic multinodular goiter we can have normal or there can be an increased uptake uh, same applies for toxic adenoma which can be associated with increased uptake and uh, yeah and further uh, there are uh, thyroid we know, antibody we know, yes, wait, wait ma'am we know yes, sir. tell yes, us sir. the difference between cold uh, nodule uh, warm nodule and hot nodule the warm nodule is which is similar to normal para uh, thyroid tissue and uh, hot nodule is more than uptake will be more than uh, normal uh, thyroid tissue and uh, cold nodule will be less uh, uptake no. will be missing how can you say it is similar to it sing then you know if, if it is similar then it cannot be a nodule at all yes. see there is in warm nodule the difference between warm nodule and cold nodule is that in warm nodule there is uptake but there is an uptake in the surrounding thyroid tissue as well but in cold nodule the uptake is only in the surrounding thyroid tissue there is be no uptake in the nodule itself ene question kelti ani ene answer edti alla pa alla avan helta illa alla adike he is not saying correctly avan example kelidra anta adike i am just telling him and in hot nodule there will be increased uptake in the nodule but the rest of the thyroid will have no uptake so that is a hot nodule understood yes sir yes. Okay. nikita you have put you have put up some message you want to clarify what what you are saying it was about the previous discussion sir uh, the use of radio isotope scanning sir yeah hmm. tell us uh, sir only in the case of a toxic patient with a nodule so to differentiate the tissues we use it is what they have indicated sir Yes, that, that is what, what I said. No? Yes, sir. That's yes, what sir. we told. Simultaneously, we have put this. Sir, it is just okay. Okay. Yeah. 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 Continue. Sir, go ahead. Mm. Uh, so, yeah. uh, so, uh, in terms of thyroid antibodies, we have the TSH receptor antibodies, thyroid peroxidase antibodies, and thyroglobulin antibodies. Uh, the TSH receptor antibodies are. Uh, of uh, like, there are three types uh, in which uh, uh, like there be stimulating type blocking type and neutral type in graves disease uh, there is the stimulating type uh, uh, the thyroid which is going to like the thyroid stimulating immunoglobulin igg because of which there will be an increase uh, thyroid function and uh, growth uh, which is causing hyperthyroidism uh, on the contrary in hashimotos there be blocking type uh, wherein uh, it will competitively block the activity of tsh on the receptor causing hypothyroidism and uh, neutral uh, neutral type have no effect on the receptors uh, that's all then uh, in thyroid uh, in case of thyroid peroxidase antibodies uh, they are the catalyst for uh, uh, the organification and coupling coupling reactions which uh, enable the production of uh, thyroxine and uh, in the presence of antibody uh, thyroid peroxidase is responsible for this if there are antibodies pr present against uh, thyroid peroxidase uh, it will inhibit it from doing so so in uh, hashimotos thyroidosis uh, thyroid hashimotos thyroiditis uh, tpo uh, antibodies will cause a fall in the thyroid hormone production causing hypothyroidism and on in great disease uh, they will have a, a cytotoxic uh, reaction uh which is uh, contributing to the pathogenesis of uh, graves disease uh and contributing to the autoimmune nature of the disease then uh, furthermore thyroglobulin antibodies uh thyroglobulin is it is it is a protein which is produced by the thyroid cells involved in uh, the synthesis of the hormone uh, so destructive thyroid diseases like hashimotos thyroid thyroiditis or uh, in case of graves disease there is release of uh, free thyroglobulin into the uh, blood stream and which will, this will cause the thyroglobulin antibody induction so the, in uh, the, so I, uh, no no just a minute is in graves this is also thyroid uh, th some thyroglobulin antibodies are there uh, yes sir like i uh, i had read that uh, No, I thought like the, the... so the so the TSH receptor antibodies are predominantly in in Graves' disease. With Hashimoto's, you have 
the, the, the peroxidase and thyroglobulin, uh, you know, this one, um, antibodies. Yes, sir, that's all... it, but here it was uh, mentioned that uh, even the uh, in Graves' disease, uh, thyroid, uh, thyroglobulin antibodies are present as well, is what was written for. Okay, check on that one. I, you know, yes, sir. Yes, sir. Books are leaders. Okay, carry on. Uh, yes, sir. Uh, so, uh, when we are evaluating for uh, hyperthyroid, uh, hypothyroidism, uh, we are suspecting it. You will measure the thyroid function test. Uh, if we find that uh, there is an increase in the level of TSH, and uh, uh, in, in addition, you have increased. Increase or decrease? Uh, so, if there's an increased TSH level and increased T3, T4 both, so that okay. that is when you uh, suspect uh, adenoma. Uh, that, uh, yeah, like it you could suspect be because pituitary. of the adenomas, adenomas, uh, adenomas. Yeah, sir. Like some sort of thyrotropic okay. adenoma, pituitary adenoma is what you suspect, sir, and. Okay. Uh, if there is a decreased TSH, increase in T3, T4 levels, that is when you see uh, over the same thing, over hypothyroidism, and uh, a decrease in TSH level, but uh, on normal levels of T3 and T4, that's going to be a subclinical hypothyroidism. Uh, we can go ahead and see with the uh, characteristic features of grave disease if present, uh, like uh, the anything from the triad if it is present and establish the diagnosis of Graves' disease. Uh, if not, uh, then we go ahead with, uh, uh, like, uh, we can go two ways. We can check the uh, anti uh, the antibodies. And uh, in addition, we uh, do the radioactive iodine uptake scan as well. And... Uh, before, so you the, the yeah, yeah. before you do the radioactive uptake scan, you do an ultrasound scan of the thyroid. To see if there are nodules. Yes, sir. And also those anti-thyroid yes, receptor antibody. Yes, sir. The, uh, the anti-TRA uh, antibodies, like thyroid receptor antibodies, if they come out positive, then uh, we can establish the diagnosis of Graves' disease. And now you are, ultra, if it is, uh, now you are discussing the Graves' disease, tell only the features of Graves' disease. Don't confuse with other things. Uh, yes, sir. So for Graves' disease... Uh, yeah. Uh, after checking as and when you get that uh, individual uh, this thing topic you describe those findings yes sir uh, so for graves disease uh, we look at the clinical signs uh, we uh, look at the uh, thyroid function test uh, if those are inconclusive uh, we also look at the uh, uh, anti uh, thyroid uh, tsh receptor antibodies uh, if that is positive uh, then uh, we can establish uh, graves disease if uh, if these findings are not found, then uh, after an ultrasound scan, we can go ahead with a radioactive iodine uh, uptake scan. Uh, here, uh, if we see a high uptake and diffuse pattern, again, uh, we can... Uh, it think it of can be technetium-99 uh, as well. You do a thyroid nu nuclear yes, nuclear medicine scan. Thyroid. It will not be radioactive. Yeah, nowadays it is only technetium-99 yes. which is done. Radioiodine is done only when you are considering treatment for it. Okay. Yes, go sir. on, go on. And, uh, uh, diffuse pattern again establishes Graves' disease and uh, a nodular pattern we can... Uh, uh, assume it to be multinodular goiter or toxic adenoma. Uh, if we have a low uptake, then uh, we'll check for. Uh, no, you rule out. You are discussing Graves disease. Don't go to all those things. Sir. Yeah, that is what yes, sir, in these situations you treat Graves disease. Graves disease, yes, sir. So, uh, like that is what how what that was. Because the you are prolonging the time already. Ten o'clock. You tell the futures. Yes or no? That's all. Yes, Don't sir. That's, bring me that is all. Is for. Uh, Yes, sir. That's all for Graves' disease. Yeah, that's what. Uh, yeah. Yes, sir. and uh, thyroid toxicosis again. It is a hypermetabolic state, uh, which uh, like Graves' disease can be a cause for thyroid toxicosis where there are inappropriately high levels of uh, uh, this uh, th thyroid hormones, irrespective of the source. And uh, uh, in addition to the uh, earlier effects, it can have a generalized uh, hypermetabolism and in addition we can have the uh, cardiac effects as well. Uh, the treatment 
uh, overall uh, is uh, first we go for uh, anti thyroid uh, we consider three and things anti thyroid drugs in few slides as tens at how many slides uh, in us so there are more so like uh, thyroid storm and uh, the thyroiditis inflammatory fever no, each, each one uh, anti thyroid drugs each one you have indications contraindications side effects all those things no duration of treatment yes sir yes sir i i uh, i've not added it in the slide but i have to speak up on it like yeah all the, these three carry it. another one hour will take Sir, Niranjan. Yeah. Ah, sir. What do we do? Start. Okay. Because it is important to know all the the way yes, you yes. have to initiate the treatment, when to stop, when for the indications for surgery, indications for radioiodine, all these things are there. Yeah, yeah. We'll uh, discuss in another class then. Okay. I think uh, comments. Lakshman, sir, birthday lawyer, yeah, next week. I told him to come, but he is still not convinced he should come. Students, yes. you request him. Yanmas, you should go and request, man. Why you are missing a great teacher? Go and sit fasting in front of his house. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, no. You rare to get uh, the... Lakshman, Ravishankar, Niranjan, you should not miss those teachers. You won't get such teacher. Hmm. By hook or crook, you should bring all three of them to all the classes. Comments? Sanya. Sanya. Uh, so she presented very well, sir, in last. Uh, like, she's covered a lot of uh, concepts, everything. I liked her class, sir. Is very detailed and understanding. Sanket? So just one uh, uh, doubt I had, sir. Like uh, she mentioned uh, radio isotope scan so many times in thyrotoxicosis, sir. So oh. uh, during the exams, uh, they should limit it to uh, following uh, surgery for differentiated thyroid cancer, sir. Uh, like main no, indication no, no. that is that is what we clarified what yes, she means by radioactive iodine scan is a diagnostic scan as well in western literature they quote uh, uh, technician 99 also as a radioactive iodine most of the places yes. here at least in india uh, and probably in the guidelines also it is system ab scan not radioisotope scan she is talking yes, about diagnostic scan so radio uh, isotope iodine scan can also be a diagnostic scan so, but most of the yes. places it is technetium 99, which is done as a diagnostic scan. Radio iodine is most of the times done as a therapeutic, uh, this thing, modality. So, but so what is meant by radio one... iodine? Radio iodine is, it is technetium. It is nuclear, like uh, thyroid scan. Nuclear scan. Uh, so, no, but no, even if it's technetium no, or radio, yes, sir. No, Sanket, we don't yes. get confused. See, the thing is, what she said is correct. If there yes. is hyperthyroidism, if on ultrasound scan there is nodules, then you are, you know, well within your rights to do a technician 99M scan to find out if it is a solitary nodule or multi, multi nodular goiter with, which is causing hyperthyroidism. But in equivocal case, again, doing a technician 99M scan is good because if it is diffuse uptake, again, if it is equivocal, then it will confirm that it is thyrotoxicosis. Yes. You are yes. right. You are right in thinking about the Iodine scan in the Western literature, the situation is different because iodine isotopes 123 is, is a short acting isotope. You do that for the initial diagnostic. initial diagnostic test, and then if you are going for ablation, then you go for I131. In India, you don't have I123. So what you do is you do a low dose I131 first, and then for therapeutic, you give the high dose. So that is the thing. That is for therapeutic post, as you said, for post uh, thyroid cancer treatment. So uh, the difference is that isotope scan is for diagnosis when the TSH is low. Uh, when TSH is normal or high, there is no role for uh, isotope scans. It's very clear. Okay. Yes. 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 Now, Thank you. Any doubts now? 
No, sir. Rest of the thing was clear, sir. Okay, right. It was good. Good presentation. Second, sir. Very good presentation. Well, focus more on points related to surgery. Yes. Ravi Shankar, sir. Because this is a I senior think... surgeon, so be coming to the exam, so. I, I, Naz, I think uh, you seemed a bit muddled today. Not as kind of clarity and crispness which you displayed last time is yeah, not there. Uh, excellent uh, presentations before, Alva. Uh, so you just need to prepare better and uh, discuss it with the you know the moderator. They will tell you they that is there. The discussion is to just you know why you are saying all these things and whenever wherever you have doubts, you clarify that with your moderator so that when you present, there is no doubt because. Whatever information you are giving is for the student's benefit. So, otherwise, I think, you know, information is good. You are a bit uh, unclear about certain things, which will, which will come. Yes, you are only a first-year student. No, so, no problem. I, I think but it was due to, uh, this time she was not uh, prepared on time. So, it was last uh -huh. minute uh, adding up of things and uh, this thing. So, don't, don't, do that. Have to prepare uh, don't have time, you postpone it. So you have to prepare well, but you have mm. covered most of the topics and you have understood. But today, compared to your previous classes, you are a little uh, jumbled up. I think so this is, what, this is what we tell students. See, the, the virtue of preparing early is to make sure such things don't happen. That is why we tell you, sometimes you have cancelled classes if you are not prepared. Vinod knows that. Okay. Okay, I think we will end and uh, reschedule the another class next time. Good night. Yeah. Good night.